Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. This week's episode is the birthday episode, and one of the biggest things people like seeing at birthdays is reactions, whether it's reactions to a party or reactions to presents. So this week, I'm going to look at some exciting explosive reactions with metals. Let's check it out. The periodic table of elements shows all of the known elements in the world. Down the left hand side of the periodic table is a group of related metals called the alkali metals. These metals are very reactive, so they need to be kept contained within oil to stop them coming in contact with air and water. These metals also have some very interesting properties. For example, they all have very low boiling points for metals. Starting from the top, lithium has a boiling point of 180 degrees Celsius, and this boiling point drops as you work your way down the alkali metals to cesium, for example, which has a boiling point of 28 degrees Celsius. Now, although that 180 degrees Celsius might sound hot for melting lithium, that is actually a very low temperature compared to typical metals, such as iron, which has a melting point of 1540 degrees Celsius. These metals are also very soft, which means they can easily be cut by a knife, and they are also very light. The three I'm going to be looking at today will all float on the surface of water. One of the things I find most exciting about these metals is the way they react with cold water, and that's what I'm going to be looking at today. However, I have already said that these metals are very reactive, so first I need to put on some rubber gloves and some safety goggles before I do anything with these metals. Also, because the reactions are very strong and these metals are not particularly cheap, this is not one that you should do at home. But you will get the joy of watching the reactions in this video. So, let's get set up. Now that I've got my safety gear on, it's time to start exploring these metals. Out in my garden, I have a bowl full of cold water, and I'm going to look at each metal in turn, taking some out of the container and dropping roughly the same amount of each metal in turn into that bowl of water and watching the reaction. First, I'm going to start with lithium. This jar of lithium is also filled with oil, as I mentioned it needs to be there to protect the metal from air and water. I'm using a set of tweezers to take the lithium out, and as I'm doing that, I'm breaking apart bits of the metal because it is so soft. Once I've got a decent amount of lithium out of the container, I'm going to go out into the back garden, drop it into the top of the water and watch what happens. You'll have noticed that the lithium started fizzing and moving about there on the surface of the water. This fizzing is caused by the production of hydrogen gas, and as the lithium is dissolving in the water, it is creating a solution called lithium hydroxide. This solution is an alkali solution, meaning it is the opposite of an acid, and this is why these metals are called alkali metals. Now that I've looked at the lithium, I'm going to move on to the sodium. My sodium is tightly sealed within two packets and again is coated in oil to protect it from air and water. I'm going to take out a piece of sodium roughly equal in size to the amount of lithium that I used. I'm going to take the sodium outside and drop it into the bowl of water and watch what happens. You'll have noticed there that the sodium started fizzing and moving about the water faster than the lithium did. Also towards the end there, the sodium actually caught fire before there was a loud pop. This shows that sodium is a more reactive metal than lithium. 
Again, hydrogen gas was produced, which was what that fizzing was. And as the sodium dissolves in the water, it produces sodium hydroxide. Again, this is an alkali solution. Something else though we noticed about the experiment this time is that it is an exothermic reaction. That means it produces heat and in fact the sodium produced so much heat it managed to ignite the hydrogen gas and that's what the flame and the loud pop was. So now that I've explored sodium I'm going to move on to potassium. Again the potassium is tightly sealed within two packets and is coated in oil. This potassium has come out in a big lump, but this gives me a chance to show you how soft the metal is by being able to break it into bits with my hands. I'm going to take out a piece of potassium roughly equal in size to the piece of sodium and the pieces of lithium that I used, drop it into the bowl of water and watch what happens. You'll have noticed there that the potassium immediately ignited when it touched the water as it was fizzing and moving about and then there was a very loud pop and it actually sprayed bits of potassium, water and smoke out into the air. This shows that potassium has an even stronger reaction than sodium does. This is the case as you work down the alkali metals. Each one has a stronger reaction with water than the metal before it. Now I use roughly the same small amount of each metal and the reason I just used a small amount is because these reactions can get quite violent if you put in too much. To demonstrate this I did one more using a bit more sodium than I used in that initial demonstration. I decided to do it with sodium because it sat in between the two reactions of the lithium and the potassium. So with a little bit more sodium than I had before this is the type of reaction that I got. You'll see it reacted much stronger there with the water than the previous sodium experiment. It was fizzing a lot more, the flame was bigger and the pop was a lot bigger and it actually sprayed a lot of water out of the bowl. That is why I did not want to do it with a larger piece of potassium. If you think about how strong the potassium reacted previously, if I put in a larger bit that would be not safe for my equipment as well as for myself. And that is why you should not try these experiments at home. Well that's all for this week, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did please hit the like and subscribe buttons to stay up to date on all future content. As always I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added links here to the other STEM demos and explanation videos I've done here to my STEM career interviews and here to my 10 things you should know series. This has been STEM with Mr N, exploring reactions. <laughs>